Hello again. Welcome to another edition of Arts and Ideas. I'm Sue Swinand. Today I have a very special and interesting guest. He's a uh, digital artist, which we haven't had before, by the way. And he's also a librarian and archivist. And I just tell you a little bit about him. He's currently the resource library, library coordinator for the Visual and Performing Arts Department at Clark University. He received a Bachelor of Arts in Screen Studies from Clark after transferring from the University of New England where he majored in psychobiology. So he's got a wide background here as a Master's of Science in Library and Information Science and uh, a Master's of Science in Information Technology. So uh, it's a very... That I'm, that I'm working on right now. That I he's working finished. on. Okay. It's almost, <laughs> almost, <laughs> almost. But uh, it's, it's interesting to me uh, because uh, I'm really happy to learn more about this field. I mean, the art world is certainly changing in so many ways and in drastic ways as everything mm. else has changed mm. in the last 10 years. Things are upside down and we're, <laughs> we're, no, we're, it's in the air. We're figuring it mm. out. Mm. And uh, so I'm happy to have you here. Thank you for joining us. It's a pleasure to be here. Thanks so much. You know, I was thinking maybe you could start by showing the audience uh, some of your recent projects. Sure. Uh, what was the one that you did with Kelly Square? Is that the one you're going to start with? Yeah. Um, so we'll watch a trailer that actually just came out yesterday. Um, when you Max say came out, you mean released on, on YouTube, yeah. On YouTube. Yeah, and Facebook. And we, we were talking <laughs> about that. Like, where is art going to be seen? Yeah. You know, it, yeah. art is free now. You just yeah. go on YouTube and find let's it. Click a button. Yeah. yeah. Oh, well, let's look right, at that. Yeah. And, well, um, so, how there. long were you working on this? Oh, this has been, I mean, here we are. It's almost June. It's really been a year and a half of sort of just conceptualizing, planning. Um, you know, we just started shooting a couple months ago, so you know, we're finally in the editing phase. We've got a soundtrack that was made this week and um, from Jasper, the music major over at Clark. So, well, how uh, nice to be in that environment where mm. everything can kind mm. of percolate and, mm -hmm. you know, be cross-pollinated. It's yeah. great. Oh, yeah. It's a... Uh, I mean, I think a video is, it has to be collaborative, so unless, I don't know, unless you're doing your own, I don't know, um, really lo-fi sort of, uh, one man called? band, one man is, band is, is sort pretty of, yeah. limiting. but even at the same time, you're relying on, you know, video editing technology or sure. computer, or it's sure. sort of, it's always mediated through some sort of mechanical infer interface, yeah. which I find interesting. So so in that little clip we just saw, uh, I noticed mm. you had aerial shots. How did those uh, come into being? That is, um, and I actually brought it here with me today. So uh, that was with an aerial, um, I don't know quite what to call it. Some would call it a drone. Some would call it a, an unmanned aerial vehicle. Um, I just think of it as Where a, is the camera? a helicopter. The camera is... Goes on that little... Oh, did I bring it today? Oh, here it is. Okay. Well, you could just tell us. Oh, that's the size GoPro of it. A GoPro camera that attaches to that. Oh, my goodness. This is actually... Um, needs some repairs, <laughs> unfortunately. But, uh, you know, it's under warranty, so it's all good. Um, I got this through an Arts Worcester Materials grant. Isn't so that wonderful? What a good application of a grant. Uh, it, it is... It's been quite amazing. And I got to tell you, every time I fly this, it's, it, you know, we're living in the 21st century now. You can fly a camera up in the air and take shots of things. And it, who would have thought, you know, even like 10 years ago, this was, I mean. It was something it was only the KBG so was dreaming about. KBG <laughs> or, yeah, unless you had, um, you know, someone with a pilot's license or yeah. you yourself or a pilot to get up. To get those aerial shots, yeah. you had to pay a pilot to get you up there. Yeah. and then shoot out the window or something. <laughs> <laughs> or, yeah, or uh, it was funny, actually, in the early sort of planning stages of the Kelly Square stuff, we were thinking about how else could we get a shot of Kelly Square? Oh, yeah, there's the bumper stickers. I love it. Were. This car survives <laughs> Kelly Square. Mount Washington yeah. or bust. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I mean, like, sh should we hang wires across Kelly Square and try to, like, suspend a camera? And 
Yeah, so this arts grant really just made a whole new world of possibilities with this yeah. project. So, Well, look yeah. at these cameras that they're putting on athletes' bodies mm. and heads yep. and or on animals mm. and birds and it you know art really gives us an experience of our time that's new and the whole idea of technology I was thinking about mm. it this morning you know that interface of science and art and mm. in a way art has always been trying to break new ground trying to see who we are and what we are and how we fit mm. into the world and it's the same thing science does. They're always trying to go into yeah, the unknown. Pushing pushing the boundaries. Yeah. yeah. That's, but yeah. now we have these v devices mm. which can show us things that nobody has ever, ever, mm. ever seen before. And that's you know, that's an interesting part about the these GoPro cameras now. Each generation gets better and better. They're starting to add sort of like Know, slow mo effects so you can speed yes. down time and see like finer details of things and it's really you know that overlap is just getting better and, and better, in a so. way you know art uh, art was always about discovering experience of the world and mm. more human aspects of the experience whereas science was more the practical technical discovery mm. but now you know when the camera can show you what it feels like to go over the waterfall <laughs> <laughs> it, it's it's yeah. just amazing. Yeah, or I mean, even things like we had an exhibit at Clark. I think it was last October. I want to say it was a, a macro micro exhibit where they they put up shots of. Was it, you're supposed to quiz yourself: Is this a microscopic image, or am I looking at a, a macroscopic image? So, was, you know, images of the well, Sahara Desert are juxtaposed to. The Mississippi River the whole and thing things of like scaling. that, and all scale and all that. Scaling. It's really all Remember with yeah. the mantle broad, you know, with yep. the big and the little, and mm -hmm. it repeats and repeats mm -hmm. on different scales. I love that. That's mm. the. We're talking a little bit about the the patterns of mathematics too, and right, right. Before, tell, yeah. tell us about how you got into uh, how you got into being a, vi a, a digital artist. Where uh, I looked on his website. And it oh, yeah. was so interesting because he has a timeline on his website. And it, I've not seen that before. But in a way, that graphically said to me mm. the way your brain works, you know, to mm. have a timeline and information in a system a mm. of development. Mm -hmm. And really, you were saying that's what you're doing at Clark. But uh, so yeah. let me not jump the gun. Let's go back to how you got yeah. started and what you started in. I, I, yeah, you're right. I mean, I, in a way, music is is math. If you're dividing time. So you started with music. I started with music, and that, you know, the more I've been thinking about it, that has really, I guess, sort of informed the way that I view art and I, even video specifically. I, I guess, I sort of think of the construction of video as making a musical piece in a way. You're sort of you know, there's, in, there's an introduction section, there's a, maybe a coda at the end, there's different parts that repeat, especially when like a YouTube video series like that, you'll have you know, sort of similar aspects that you know, relate to each other so in each you're video. Dealing so it's, yeah, it's, um, I don't know, I, I guess. So you're dealing with uh, systems of organization right, right. the same way a composition is done with music yeah uh, you're making systems of organizing information mm -hmm. with your with your videos and that's a, I mean that's the same reason I wanted to do a timeline was to show I mean to show people who visit my website you know this is each item I think when you look at it individually maybe you can see a, you know a certain time span but a lot of these things in my life overlap Sure. So as you follow and along, and weave together sort of, again, and, weave and together, come back, yeah. and yeah, yeah. So I don't know if I could, and this is uh, the hard part about, I guess, being a digital artist is how do you how do you specify one thing when, I mean, digital is everything now. It's you're exploring. It's it's, it's music. It's video. It's photo. There you know, it's there really are not separations between anymore. I feel like mm. even in the physical visual arts, where not the mm. virtual you know, where you're making things, the the barriers are just being more and more mm. eliminated. And you can add 
smell to a piece or <laughs> you know it's just uh, it's very very different but the whole idea yeah. of the virtual world and how that's going to impact mm. the arts in the future mm -hmm. is very interesting so after the music what happened you did some web design right well from there I guess I have an interesting background so a lot of people learned you know Photoshop and digital editing tools like that maybe when they took a class or intro to photography course or things like that I I was lucky enough my dad uh, he's a printer and working in digital prepress they had a lot of those tools already so from a very early age so like Photoshop 1.0 like that I think that was my introduction to editing images was on an old Apple II computer you know, still in black and white, and just being able to sort of so follow that evolution. So it's part of your so whole makeup and natural way of doing things, because yeah. you grew up doing yeah. it. Yeah, I mean, a lot of it was self-taught. Um, definitely all the web stuff. I remember, I think I picked up <laughs> from the public library, uh, you know, HTML for Dummies book back in like 96. I think we have that. So <laughs> 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 yeah, so I mean, but it's been... I mean, it was, I'm lucky because I've been able to sort mm -hmm. of follow the progression of the web mm -hmm. as it's happened. So. so you've done graphic design, web design, and then you moved into... I guess video was the next thing, which well, I... I did, or still? Still. Oh, well, that's true. I, I did... So at, at after my first summer job in high school, that was one thing I saved up for was a digital camera. Um, although, you know, I, I didn't really pick up photography again until a couple summers ago, um, actually at Clark again, mm -hmm. um, with a newer camera. So it's kind of been, it's been interesting to sort of jump in and out of different mediums and were you When you the did technology. the digital photography with the uh, still camera, mm -hmm. were you thinking about like making fine art prints for sale or what, you know, what was your focus? Um, I guess, I mean, my objective with that class was to sort of just get familiar with the tools. So it had okay. been so long since I had touched a still photo camera. And in 10 years, so much has changed in, in you know, the quality of photo photography and um, just and the possibilities. The possibilities, yeah. yeah. So that was also just sort of getting used to that camera, which is you know, a DSLR camera. Uh, which can also do video, so it was a perfect sort of introduction Transition. to get back to that. Yeah, I was very deliberate when I sort of graduated um, with a screen studies um, major. I knew I wanted to wait for the technology to sort of catch up a little to consumer levels. So now, I mean, now everyone has an HD camera on their phone, but I mean, as recently as ten years ago, no, that was not yeah. the case. It was a little bit harder to get Absolutely. that equipment. So it's really it, it's yeah. just moving so fast. It's amazing. Um, so tell us a little bit about how, so now, then you went to library science, mm -hmm. and that was about information. And another, mm. another uh, line he had on his computer that I loved was that um, you said information is, is beautiful. What was mm. that? Uh, yeah, that, the, uh, yeah, information the is beautiful. And that, I guess it goes back to... Um, just the way I think about art in general is uh, I still sort of have that psychological twist to things. So I think about art in a way as how more related to the perception side of things. So how are we, how's the information getting to us um, and different tricks along the way and stuff that you so can do. So how is the informational getting to us, meaning how our brain is perceiving? How do we, yeah. yeah. And how do you, as an artist, use that knowledge to shape your work? Uh, now, you had yeah. an image of the printer at Clark, didn't mm -hmm. you, too? Let's show them that. Yeah. And, uh, well, I, I re just tell us about it. Sure. So um, we actually, last summer, just jumped into 3D printing at uh, the Resource Library at Clark. And it, it's interesting. So imagine, I, well, I should start by saying there's there's a lots of different ways to achieve 3D printing. The ones that we see now are more of the, um, I think of it as like a robotic hut glue gun. So it's depositing a layer on top of itself to form a 3D object. Um, but 
And I think so it's just like doing, you press print, and mm. instead of it coming out on yeah. two dimensions, the printer actually right. follows the numbers right. and creates the actual 3D form. And they mostly use plastics, but I think in the future there's going to be more, or different applications for that. So um, if you could imagine the ability to maybe 3D print your own circuit board, or to, I mean, I've seen things where there's 3D printing for food, or just different things like that. So any way that you can use a computer to control well, imagine that. imagine the little parts they use to make little prosthesis and oh, stuff. Yeah. Oh, the and medical applications of, yeah. are phenomenal. Yeah, and in ways that you wouldn't expect it, I think, at first. So one example I like is one of the first 3D printed ears it wasn't that they printed the air itself, but use a 3D printer to create the mold yeah. that you then sort of lab grow yeah. from skin grafts, an ear-shaped object. So it's... <laughs> it, the, yeah. the future is amazing. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm worried that we won't get to the point of showing more of your work. I wanted to mm -hmm. ask you about data visualization, mm -hmm. because I love the term mm -hmm. and I want to know more what that is. So that's... That's something that I started with at a, at an internship that I found while I was at Simmons, um, which, so unfortunately that company sort of ended the project I was working on, but I was able to keep some of that data and now it's, it's living again as a new project. Um, if you go to so what are you doing? You're taking data and how does it become something yeah. how does it become a work yeah well so let me give you an example so the project that i just completed this year is dead based which is grateful dead tour maps juxtapose on a so you have a google map it shows you each concert location but then we're connecting the dots between each location so instead of say seeing a map of the united states and pinpoints thousands of pinpoints all at one spot Data visualization to me is more about creating a context to understand that information better. So you can slice and dice things so that, you know, just from a glance, you can sort of see the relationship between those different areas instead of just maybe a list of, you know, locations and dates. Maybe if you don't, if you're not from California, you don't know the, the geography of the okay. you know, peninsula and all that stuff. So. So you're giving a visual form right. to something right. which is mental or... Uh, yeah. I, I mean, I, I'm just interested in maps in general, so that's, I guess, what I sort of gravitate towards. Mm -hmm. But, mm -hmm. um, I mean, a pie chart is data visualization. Yes. Um, maybe I mean, there's, all, there's all kinds of different... I mean, it's picking the right tool for the job, I guess, is where that becomes a science and also an art. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, it's just sort of presenting information in a way that's more digestible. Is that's that, the the w would that be considered your process of discovering what kinds of images? In other words, you look for this mm -hmm. data and then that is what creates your image and your form and your, that's the process you use to create your image? Um, would you say that's true? I could, yeah. Mm -hmm. I guess it's creating a, I mean, you want to tell a story, but you don't also want to tell this is what the story is. You're sort of presenting information away for mm -hmm. people to mm -hmm. sort of make their own conclusions. So is the information it, so. more important that they perceive the information, or is it more about the visual itself? Is it more conceptual then than uh, visual, or? Uh, I was asking you before if you consider yeah. yourself more <laughs> a scientist or yeah. more of a visual artist. Yeah. Um, I mean, it really depends on what you're working on. I think I've seen some data visualizations where it's maybe a little bit too much on the art side, and so we're forgetting that you're losing you know, the you're point losing of the data. what, you're, what yeah. the data is. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. Um, but at the same time. I mean, it is a is a, a scatter plot in a science you know a science journal paper is that data visualization? Maybe not the same way, although it is. I don't think they're thinking of it; they're not approaching it as an artist would. Yes. Maybe. Yes. 
Yeah, very interesting. Uh, before we run out of time, I want to be sure yeah. to ask you about uh, your glitch artwork. Oh, yeah. Because that was something new yeah. to me, and I, the concept yeah. is very interesting. So I know you've seen some, uh, yeah, some images. We can we show can the audience a few examples of that. I brought one, one that I actually forgot about until this interview that I thought okay. was an interesting example. So for people who... Okay, there's, oh, 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 that's photography. Now, glitch art uh -huh. is something you started with at Clark, right? My introduction to the glitch art was actually through um, the screen studies director now, Hugh Manon. That's sort of, that's been his thing for a while. At Clark. At Clark, yeah. Um, and, well, so I should explain what glitch art is. It's sort of intentionally, so we'll take a digital image, just as an example, take a digital image and maybe corrupt part of the data or subtract part of the data so that when you go to display it again, it doesn't look quite the way it should. We're kind of tricking the computer to say, view this, but it doesn't know that we've changed it in a way. So, so most images are compressed. Altered They're altered, in some way. yeah. But, so a JPEG image has some compression added to it to shrink down the file size. That compression is actually just, it's not the ones and zeros that make up each pixel in the photo. It's a, it's more like a, a math problem that the computer solves and then the solution is what you're viewing. So if you change, uh, if you could think of it as like an algebra, like let's take X from this one side and yeah. then try to view it again, that completely changes the output of that. What I like about that concept is that when you change one thing in your, mm. like, like in the computer uh, a displaying something, mm -hmm. it can retains a certain consistency in Unity right. because it's 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 done uniformly mm -hmm. throughout the image, mm -hmm. so that it can t it it's a variation that right. it's still. Right. Very cohesive. Right. Which, yeah, it, it introduces a lot of opportunities. Yeah. Uh, it, but Show me a couple. Okay, yeah. Well, um, I mean, these are interesting to view, I think, as a series because you can kind of get different bits and pieces of the same thing. So um, these are you know, taken from a video, then each individual frame is manipulated in a way to kind of get a different effect. So. I don't know if I so would were these all coming these, from a digital landscape photograph? Is that what you started with, or this started with? Oh, where did I? This was from footage that I contributed to a different video project at Clark, and then I, I liked the shot so much that I had to do something with it. So, so these are really the complete but abstractions, but uh, a compilation mm. of elements mm. that. Um, that come together in totally new ways that are really just based mm. on varying bits of information in the computer. Right. And oh, look yeah. at this. And so, look okay, at this. here's another one that is sort of an example of sort of the digital side of glitch. It's more mm -hmm. the mechanical side. So, mm -hmm. with this one, I took. I don't know if you've ever seen a like a a wand scanner. You might take on like a newspaper and just like it glides yes, over the yes, page. Yes. So with that, you can actually trick it to keep scanning. I hold it up in the air, and there's a little wheel, and you sort of like twist that wheel, and it's sampling. It's taking a new sample of the room at each step. And it creates this, I mean, Amazing. totally abstract, Amazing. just sort of like. And yet again, that there's that unity and variety, like mm. a musical composition, really. Mm -hmm. You know, mm. repetitions and variations. Mm. So what else do we have to talk about before we're out of time here? You uh, have a, he has a terrific website, and oh. um, I think you uh, uh, w you'd enjoy looking at that. Uh, so that's uh, aka markman dot com, m a r k m a n. That's my name. Yeah, and <laughs> um, what do we have on there? I mean, we've got the timeline we just talked about. I've yeah. got links to other things. You can find my YouTube channel with. Do um, you the think Kelly that in the future the art world is going to be still centered in? commercial galleries and things like that? Or do you think it's going to be all mm. virtual and free to the world and artists are going to just be everybody who's making anything? And it's, you know, yeah. my gift to you, your gift yeah. to me. 
Uh, I don't I know mean, if it has to be a... Store, yeah, yeah. How do you buy and store and own mm. and collect digital art mm. in a sense, you know? it's. Yeah, it's sort of, um, I mean, I don't know if it has to be an either or situation. It can be both. Um, and what I'm really interested in now is I think in the next year we'll see more virtual reality applications where maybe you can go and visit a virtual gallery that displays. Yeah, that's sort of, per that's sort yeah. of um, maintaining the old order, mm. whereas I think we're moving into a new mm. virtual order yeah. where what we think art is isn't going to be what we thought it was mm. before. I mean, that's that's definitely my approach. I just sort of put things out there, and then, you know, I I, I make a website with the understanding that it's going to exist for, you know, 10, 20, 50 years. Who, who knows how long? So we're kind of, um, I don't know, I think the scale of time has changed so much in displaying art that yeah. kind of kind of shifts things around. Our way of experiencing it, mm. everything. So, um, well... I feel like I'm just scratching the surface yeah, here, really. and you have <laughs> you have so much to teach me and the rest of us. But uh, I'm kind of of a different era. But I really did enjoy looking at your work, and I especially liked Thanks the so uh, the glitch ones because mm. I like that idea of visual systems mm -hmm. and how they create form and mm -hmm. uh, you know form that is cohesive and in a way representing the world we live in. Uh, just with variations. Mm. So uh, I'll be looking for the the is now is the um, is the Kelly Square project. I survived Ke Kelly Square. Is that going to be a longer piece or is that that yeah that's will a that year be that, that's so how, that's going but on. But I mean, for how long will that be? Do you think when it's done? Oh, um, I mean, I'm shooting for 10, 20 interviews. We'll so see. you can so look for the uh, my this car survived Kelly Square on YouTube. Coming, yeah, coming yeah. in the near future, and also oh, yeah. we'll be watching <laughs> his website uh, and looking mm -hmm. for great things. And I enjoyed so much. Thanks so much having you here today. And I really feel like uh, I, I want to learn more from you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> it's been a pleasure. Okay. Hope Thanks. you'll join us again next time for another edition of Arts and Ideas. Mm -hmm.